Right. All right. Can everyone hear me out there? The world can hear you, John. Okay. Awesome. I'd like to call a meeting to order. Public, please hold comments until a select board chairman opens the agenda items for public comment. When addressing the board, state your full name, both in person and on Zoom. It is suggested that you enter your full name as your ID on Zoom. You like to get that out. Minutes. I will take a motion to approve the minutes of February 27, 2023. I'll move them. Second. All in favor? One abstention, please. Yeah. Appointments, uh, raise your hand. Appointments, recognitions, and resignations, none presented. Consent agenda, none presented. Any select board reports? Oh. Unfinished business, discussion of short-term short rental ordinance, no. So I think uh, as follow up to the last time we had a meeting, we were going to discuss a few of the things that were necessary uh, in preparation for getting more information to the town prior to town meeting. Um, and I provided a packet a couple weeks ago. I just had some samples from other communities that we did some research for, uh, not only for you know, if you have got to this point, administration of these types of things, but also fees, fees what other communities charge for fees. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more of a discussion at this point um, for the board to just determine, you know, here's a here's what we're thinking about for a fee structure, and then the idea of um, thinking about how the ordinance is going to be administered. Um, just as a quick report, the other things that we're working on, um, just to provide some more information ahead of time would be here's a sample application if you can then come back to you to say here's what an application might look like okay. and the kinds of um, questions that might be on the application like who's your name what's your name what's your address um, you know who's their local contact all the things that are in the ordinance um, and uh, yeah and maybe a, a sample just a quick one page summary of what the ordinance is and what it is not um, I think it would be helpful as well. So those are in the works, but not finished yet. Okay. No, Good. how do you, some of those other communities identify the potential uh, vendors in order to get the applications to them? How does that work? Well, I don't think they go out specifically and identify them. I think that the ordinance is in place, and then um, you know, the, the owner is, is responsible to try to come in. And, and do that. Um, but I can do some more research on that during the period. How, how the word gets out, whether it just goes on a website or notification in a newspaper or a combination. I'm sure it'd be a combination. Okay. Yeah. But I am very curious. Kind of think the word's out. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, yeah. 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 Also, I, I mean, I think, again, the way that the ordinance is structured is more as a town, you know, there's a lot of towns and board. Um, so it's really a board policy, you know, how you, know, how you want to roll the ordinance if it is adopted, how you kind of want to roll it out. Um, if, you know, it's something we need to think about. It, it's just like uh, we're gonna, we, we really are encouraging people to like, we're requiring people to register, but it's up to you to enforce how that rolls out, you know, in the first year or something. We're just trying to get, get things rolling. But I think... Um, you know, a good question we can we can research. But I right. think it's a maybe a longer term implementation than expecting 100% compliance in the first year. Mm -hmm. But sure. great yeah. question. Thanks. Yep. I had a question for sure. you. Um, more about nuts and bolts. Now that you're here talking mm -hmm. about that, I was thinking about. I know that if a person has two buildings, that's for, and, and for example, and they they live in one of them and they rent the other one, that's still a home a home host. Situation. Posted home, posted home stay, yeah. Right. But if they are going to, so let's take that a step further. Let's say they're occasionally going to not be there and they, they, they need a license. Will they get two licenses, one for each building or would that, because I can't, I was reading that and I could, wasn't quite clear on that. Yeah. I think the idea would be you'd get a license for each structure that is a. So if you were not permanently homestaying, if you were, if you were fitting the criteria of somebody who needed to license, you would license each rental building, each rental unit, even if like, what if there were two units in one building and you were- It's each unit. Each unit, okay. That's what I, that's what I thought, but I somehow read that and I read it again and thinking, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
Tony. Question for Noel. I'm just wondering your research, what are you seeing thieves low to high? Uh, let me get let me get that, Tony, because my brain is not doesn't have the capacity. Well, I can give you a few of them from the thing right. you handed out. Yeah, what was Portland. That? Yeah. Portland had the first unit was 100, and all the way up to the fifth unit was 2,000. Um, they had a stagger. So if you had more than one property, you pay more for more more properties. Kennebunk was 325 for three bedrooms or less. Um, a lot of them were uh, in that sort of 300 to 1,000. Uh, Cape Elizabeth had an increase if you didn't register within that registration window. And um, though that was, they all have different, I mean, all that stuff was, was in that packet. I don't remember all the details of their licensing requirements, but it's, yeah, that seems like if a fact. Just to add to it, like there are some communities like have a, like a tiered structure, you know, depending on the number of units, the yeah. different right. fee. some of them are just, you know, it's a $250 fee. Um, I think Yarmouth in that packet has yeah. no fee. Um, yeah. Right. So I think that there's, you know, it's a full range. So I, I guess the way that over the course of this time, so um, just so for for now, I'm just going to put putting aside like this is good or this is bad conversation. Like we got a lot of really good input from people who came to meetings about how to try to make this ordinance, you know, the best, most balanced ordinance that we could make it for this time. Um, obviously, over time, we're going to want to make some tweaks to it as we get into it a little bit. But um, I think what we're trying to do is really keep it as simple as we can. So, I agree. And that's Fair my recommendation would be like if you're going to put a fee to it, just make it one fee across the board, and then you can kind of feel out how that works. Right. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. What's the purpose of the fee? Well, let me jump back. My example, once again, if I decide to go away to the old camp in the woods for a couple of weeks, do I have to register my house? No. no. Oh. Oh. Some of the advantages that for reading the ordinance. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm done. I'm ready. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> Claire. So I have a question, assuming that we will be handling the phone calls coming mm -hmm. through the office. Who is the authority that we direct these calls to? And I would expect it would be a substantial amount of paperwork, a, a database, maybe a, a time. And has that been thought about? Is who is gonna? Well, that that is a question. I mean, you've got staff here that have full loads already on their plates. Yeah. So, where is the position we, that you're staffing to do that? We don't know yet. Right. That's so it. these are yeah. concerns, mm -hmm. and I mean, that's why it's too early to put it on the warrant. <laughs> you know, it's a chicken and egg thing. What do you do first? I would I would argue that that's that the, those questions are a good reason to make the. The, the fee relatively low and as as I mean you look at some of these that are um I think not it was it was Falma or one it was uh anyway they're, they're, the reason that Yarmouth had no fee was that their first round was to gather data they are I would be relatively confident in assuming that there will be a fee down the road once they have that data collected I I don't think it would be smart for us to go forward with no fee, but I think we should keep it low so that people don't try to avoid it. And we don't have 8 million people trying to clarify. They just, because 300 yeah. bucks is, is like less than a day for most of these rentals. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just wondering, um, all these towns that have the fee, have they all had to hire a specific person to manage this license? Because we have a town right next door to us called Bar Harbor. And they just published that they had to pay someone forty-eight thousand dollars a year plus workers' comp plus benefits because they're a town employee, which all gets passed to the town, the taxpayer, who is already paying their taxes on their property and renting their houses in probably what we're going to find eighty percent of the cases to pay their taxes and their mortgages. And you're maybe talking about in Northeast Harbor, Mount Desert, five to ten percent of the people that you're afraid of, the people who you're saying are coming in and renting four or five units and making it a business. So my, what I was saying earlier to John was, I don't understand why this license doesn't start with the problem, which is what you're afraid of, the four to five to six to seven house people and just have it be a very simple license saying, if you rent three or more properties, you need a license with the town and you are a business. 
And if you're a business, then the license fee is higher because you're a business. You're not a person trying to pay your mortgage. You're not a person trying to cover your taxes. I am very uncomfortable with the amount of personal information this implies. And as I was saying to John earlier, I mean, there's an implication that, you know, for me, I run a business and I pay my mortgage by renting my house while I'm working 24 seven here during the summer. I don't need you guys knowing that's how I pay my mortgage. It's, in, it's, it's not necessarily embarrassing, but it's personal information that I don't really care to, I mean, I'm doing it right now for free, but I, you know, I, I, I don't feel like, it's, I don't understand why we're not going right to the problem and trying to solve the problem with the wording of the license, instead of saying, this group is excluded, this group is excluded, because what we're trying to do is gather all of your data to narrow down the 5% of people who rent four or more, three or more units. That's, that's my big concern here. I feel like, and I also feel like it's just gonna be a bit of a gateway. Like you're gonna start with this, and then once you have the data, then it's gonna come out with that, we are now blaming the housing crisis on this island on you. And we already know you're part of it. So it's your, you know, I just, it's very, un I'm very uncomfortable about this. So anyway. I agree with Jeff that the, the fee structure should be very simple and it should be low. What, did you have a figure in mind or? I, I just threw out 300 two, bucks was right in the middle of there. Maybe. I was thinking more like 250. 250 is what Bar Harbor started with, but yeah. that's, I mean, I'm, I'd be okay with that. But I, can I just say mm -hmm. that the question wasn't answered. Do all of these towns have a dedicated person to this? Are we going to have to hire a person to so take see, care of this? We don't know. And right. the reason we don't know, we can't compare is because we don't know what those other jobs entailed and what the politics were there and what, what's going on. We just don't, we don't have the data. So, you know, we handle, what do we handle? How many dogs do we get in here? Do we license and vaccinate or do whatever we do? Well, 300. 300. Do we have 300 rental dogs. properties in town? We do. What do you think, Katrina? Just off, you know, off the cuff. Town of Albuquerque? Yeah. You've seen what Lincoln Milstein has presented to you? I, no, what do you say? <laughs> I don't think that this ordinance is necessary. And I question what happens if I work with people that refuse to register their houses? You can't prevent somebody from using their property. So I don't understand why we're doing this. Well, I would argue well, you can prevent somebody from using their property for certain purposes. I mean, that's fairly, I mean, you can't, I can't sell bread out of my garage, but I right, can rent my house. Zoning ordinance. Well, that's perhaps the bigger fish. You're right. There are, there are, and, and I understand what you're saying about, you know, if we wanted to go straight for the problem, it would be a much more aggressive. No, I don't think a fish. Okay. But, yeah. All right, Jay. Who's Jay? Hi, um, my name is Jennifer McLean. I was at the last meeting. I just want to say um, the last woman's point. Uh, you, what are you going to do if people opt not to register and to say that you do have a right to regulate, you do not. You only have a right to implement uh, new rules to the new houses, new rentals purchased past the date of the past ordinance. You do not have a right to tell people who have been continually using their home to the continued use at which it was purchased that they are no longer allowed to rent their property. My property that I purchased was used for decades as a rental. So anything new should only impact and affect those people going forward from the date that the town votes this into place. This should not affect anybody and their the previous continued use. I totally disagree with that. And to that, if lawsuits stem from this, the town, well, who's going to pay for this? There's going to be a lot of legal fallout. People are going to be suing the town. Let's say the code enforcement officer has an agenda to go house to house to check on uh, egress or smoke detectors and they uh, and they pass it and something happens. I mean, does that homeowner then have a right to go if the insurance company sues the homeowner, does the homeowner then have a right to go to the code enforcement officer because they checked it off and gave their stamp of approval? I mean, this is just like a headache. I don't know why you want to get into this. I don't know why you want to be invasive into people and their right to use the home the way that they want to. 
And there's going to be a lot of, you know, legal fallout, especially taking away licenses from people if they don't meet deadlines due to family crises or whatever's going on in Bar Harbor. Bar Harbor's up against a lot of lawsuits. And I'm really shocked that you wouldn't wait to see how all that pans out first before you waste your time, effort, and energy on um, working it through this count. Because really, it's just a waste of energy and a waste of resources and it's it's just pathetic is, is my opinion okay. thank you jennifer is it jennifer mcqueen i'm sorry mcqueen mcqueen, McQueen. john i realize i didn't mm -hmm. answer your question with do i think there are more than 300 renters from the town of mount Desert? i don't know the answer to that but what i do know in my own personal business i have fewer seasonal rentals now than i did in 2001 by a landslide. Mm -hmm. And part of that is because more people are buying a home to use it themselves. And the pandemic really made that happen as well. So I really do have fewer seasonal rentals. For your agency, you're talking about. Or are you talking about? Okay. Yes, for my agency. I mean, I think some, some would argue that the reason there's fewer through the agency is because it's quite simple to do it yourself. Um, I I, sh I share rentals with people that do them themselves sure. as well. I hear you. Many of those homes that I share yep. with Airbnb people and VRBO people, those are actually very few and far between. Okay. The ones that I that I no longer represent are no longer being offered on the open market. They've, some of them have gone underground, and I think this ordinance is going to push more underground. And is the point of this ordinance, yes, to regulate, to get data, to know, but is the point of this ordinance to try to have more year round housing? Like, you know, if what's the problem we're trying to solve here? And I think Rick mentioned this at the last meeting, before we have an ordinance, What's the problem we're trying to solve? I get data. I'm fine with data. I think data is important to have. But I just, I mean, if at the planning board the other night, there was trying to get some year-round housing and there's all kinds of questions and problems about that. So if we're trying to have more year-round feasible housing and we're trying to encourage people to rent their houses year-round to do away with short-term rentals, like, is that part of the point of this ordinance? I just, I feel like we're, we're just opening up this can of worms that's that's this big and it needs to be this big before we put it. It's just too many questions. Well, we have an unregulated commercial businesses in our town. And we have there, there's there are no kinds of ordinances. There's nothing at, in place at all, not to quantify, not to make sure they're safe for the people who rent them. Or, or pleasant for the neighbors surrounding them. And I feel if people, people are running a business in our town, we should have some- Then why don't we look at, I agree with you if you're running a business, but I don't think there's as many businesses being run. Well, that's what we're gonna find out, isn't it? It and is. Not just ask that question. Because the other thing too is, if you are renting your house and you're insuring it and you're on the books and you have to be on the books to be a VRBO, I was saying that earlier, VRBO, they pay your taxes. You, you can't sneak under the table with VRBO or Airbnb. Mm -hmm. They report to the state. Everything is above board. But they also have an extremely detailed list of smoke detectors, carbon monoxide, because people... I, I and think, this shouldn't be a problem. Because it's already being done. But it's not what you're saying. It's not your business. It's my business. And it's not my business. It's actually my home. And it's how I run my company. And, and I'm able, uh, my, my store, and I'm able to stay a member of this community. So, but that's none of your business, how I do this. But in terms of you worrying about the quality of the renter, I, I, this is my house. I don't run a business. This is my home. You're going to see all the books I read when you rent my house. You're going to sleep on the sheets that I have. This is not a business. It is a way for me to pay my mortgage and my taxes. And you're basically implying that I'm renting to the dregs, that I should be able to afford anything that you think is reasonable. 
to, and you're trying to decide what my financial situation is. And it's really inappropriate, I think. And it's just opening up when all your question really is, is how many people are renting three or more properties? How many people are truly running a business? VRBO and Airbnb make you go through an entire process. So does your insurance company to get to insure your house to do that. Mm -hmm. you're, you're like duplicating all the things we already have to do. And you're telling us we have to pay for it when we already have to pay for it twice. And not to mention, Kim has already come through all of our houses to tell us all this. So it's just, it's like redundancy, redundancy, and it feels punitive. It feels like you're targeting a group and saying, our problems rest on your shoulders. You, you caused our housing crisis because you chose to use the free market to pay your mortgage. When really what you're looking for is who came in from you know, Nevada and bought five houses, took them off the market, rented them for $5,000 a week, and is getting away with murder because they never see the house. They never see the, that is not what is happening on. I mean, maybe there's some, but that is not what's happening in most cases. In most cases, it's more like a person like me just saying, here's how I can live and exist here, run my business here, take some of the burden off of running a seasonal business. And I, I need to rent my house. It's, it's as simple as that. Or somebody like, you know, Jay, who's, who's up there talking, she bought a house knowing she could rent it knowing she could afford to buy a house here because she could rent it. And now you're changing the rules on her because you're saying that this is just data. But what the next step will be is to say, to do what Bar Harbor did and say, we don't like the number we came up with. So now we're going to cap it at 10%. And they're facing lawsuits. They're facing challenges all around. They're hiring people. It's a mess. It's a mess. Go ahead. I'm Scott Shurinis. I'm on Millbrook Road. So I totally disagree with this license thing too. I'm with these folks. I'm like a thousand percent against it. I think it's bad news. I don't know why you're doing it. I understand the housing shortage. And I also was on a Zoom meeting the other night, this project, and this should be approved. I mean, this stuff, you know, affordable housing should be approved. It shouldn't be fought by people with petitions. What is the town doing with all the summer people coming in, buying homes? And shutting their homes down for nine months out of the year, draining the pipes. They drain the pipes out. There's a house next to me. The pipes have been drained. It's not in use. They come to town for three months and then they leave. And then they complain about me, by the way, for three months. It's awful. <laughs> and then meanwhile, we're renting our house out full time and people are using it and they're using services in the town. What's the town doing with the ghost houses? They're the reason why there's a housing shortage. Rich people coming in, buying the house using it for two, three months, calling Northeast Plumbing to come and drain my pipes. And then when I come back, you know, before I get here a couple of weeks, fill, fill my pipes back up with water. And then when I leave in, you know, October, drain them again. It's a ghost house. So this is the issue. It's, it's not the short-term rent of people. Mm -hmm. Southwest Harbor is like 180 degrees from far away. They are embracing short-term rentals. Why? It brings people in the town. Bar Harbor, well, they cut it out because they already have a lot of people in town. And by the way, the whole thing, Bar Harbor had to grandfather in all those other Airbnbs. So now, current Airbnbs within, Mount, within the town of Mount Desert, you know, legally would be grandfathered in, and then the rest of the people would be shut out just like in Bar Harbor. And then they just took a big paintbrush in Bar Harbor. Oh. You know, if you have a house inside downtown Bar Harbor, well, you can't do Airbnb. Well, if you have a five-bedroom house on five acres in Bar Harbor, paintbrush, you can't do Airbnb. Well, they're not going to be able to rent to those people that work at the bars and restaurants in a far in a five-bedroom house. It's, it's not affordable. The math does not work. So I just I don't get the licensing thing. I understand about fire codes, but there's fire codes already in place. I mean, we have smoke detectors carbon monoxide, we have all this stuff. I just don't really feel, I just don't know what the town is trying to prove. Their efforts really should be in, in, in that one project that was trying to build, you know, the, the workforce housing, the six units or whatever on the one street. That's where the effort should be, not in these licenses, beating up on short-term home rent, uh, rentals. So I don't know, just my opinion. 
I'm sorry, can I get your last name? I just did it. J-E-R-U-T-I-F, 25 Middle Brooks. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Je Jennifer? Taxpayers. So. Yeah, just one more point. Um, you know, I want to encourage everybody to go onto the town website. Um, there was a comprehensive plan in 2009 that spoke about the same exact affordable housing crisis. This predates Airbnb. It predates VRBO, which is proof that this has been an ongoing issue on the island, the affordable housing crisis. So I, I would highly uh, suggest turning attention to possibly working out a, a something different, do some sort of a tax incentive so that locals that are on the island, you know, give a tax cut to people locally on the island who uh, allow their house to be a year round rental to locals, offer up tax incentives instead of attacking the short-term rental uh, business or people who are renting out their homes to pay their mortgages, why not try something new? Um, you know, and I just think that we're in the middle of a recession right now. Um, tourism in, in general is down. Like people are hurting right now. This is not the time to make it even more difficult for people who are just trying to get by by no means, the people who are opening up their doors as short-term rentals, you know, we're not, like Tracy said, the people who are running the four, four or five business franchise, um, we're just trying to get by. And to basically make it impossible when it's already tough, especially during this phase of life, um, I just, I really think that you do need to rethink certain things. But again, like I mentioned, this is not a new problem. Please go back and read the 2009 comprehensive plan. It talks about all the same issues that are being discussed, which makes me feel even more like this is just some sort of a tax guy, uh, disguise um, and a scapegoat in which to implement the tax. If you have questions, certainly go door to door to all the short term rentals. And I think you'll find no resistance at all answering any questions to put your minds at ease about what goes on. Uh, but I do think people who all together rent short term take very good care of their property. They want to maintain their property. They uh, maintain the neighborhood. They have a vested interest. These are people who are paying Maine income tax, the state of Maine. Um, they're making your town beautiful. Um, and they, you know, they take great pride in that. They don't have an interest in wanting their houses to get run down. And they also don't have an interest in wanting people to be unsafe. Um, it's uh, in our interest too, to make sure that everybody you know, the smoke detectors, the batteries are changed, everything, the 911 numbers are posted for everybody to see. We do not want harm to anybody. So um, again, don't, please don't make us the enemy. Um, we, we bring a lot of um, talented and creative space to the neighborhood. And I think that should be embraced and willing to work with you on how to fix the short term, you know, the housing, the affordable housing crisis, but potentially looking at some sort of a tax incentive, a tax cut to those locals who do open their doors to the year-round community um, is an option. Martha. Can I point out that we've already put this on the warrant and it will be discussed on the town hall floor. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I think the purpose of our discussion tonight is to set a fee. <clears throat> okay. I, I agree with Martha, but I do want to, I do, I agree with a lot of what I've heard tonight. And I think a mistake that we made early on was tying this ordinance too closely to the overall affordable housing crisis. Um, in my mind, a bigger problem is the is the dark houses in the mm -hmm. wintertime. And, and, but I would argue, however, that many of those people that decided they could afford to buy a house on MDI as their house for later for their retirement or whatever, are only able to make that calculation if they know that their mortgage is essentially free and all they need is credit. And the last people in the world that we would we that I would ever want to be part of putting out of is are the people that are residents of this town that are renting their their single family home. But the fact of the matter is, if you own a second home and your entire purpose is to rent it, in my mind, that's a business, but not according to the the regulation. It doesn't have to be in the business mm -hmm. side. So the I, we agree, I think, on a lot of the basics that you folks are bringing up. We had to start somewhere. And I, I, the dark houses and the people buying houses from out of state that don't intend to live in them until some time down the road, that know they can afford to buy a house for retirement because they can rent it weekly in the summer and pay for it, 
we end up with a gutted community. And I think it's, I'm not, you, I mean, there are arguments may be true that there aren't as many of those as you think, as I think, but we need to find out because houses are selling before they even get listed. I just think you can ask. No. <laughs> I don't think it has to be so difficult. Just that. Jerry, go ahead. We keep hearing in this discussion about the guys from away that are buying these houses from Nevada and elsewhere and never come here at all. The fact is that quite a few locals are buying many houses and doing the exact same thing. Um, not many locals, but a few. Um, and you can't just put it all like we always do as people from away, foreigners. Local people are doing it too. That's a good point. Just as well. Tony. Would it make some type of sense to maybe this issue is bigger than the board of selectmen and Nolan? Would it make sense to bump this year, um, have the input from the seasonal rental, renter, rental people that do the rentals, offer the rentals, and come up with a plan to take to town meeting? It's already going to town meeting. You folks don't have the legal authority to pull that. I don't know. So yeah, you could. We you, could. You could up until the meeting. I want the people of town to decide, and they're not yeah. voted in. Well, well, that's why I'm saying I'm saying give them should be uh, yes. more information to have before they go to town meeting. Have an ad hoc committee or a committee put together to study this from the inside out and come up with some recommendations. So if they you might have a better chance maybe. of passing. Well, I mean, we have nothing to lose by having a discussion on town meeting floor this year. So in terms of the discussion, um, it, it's every time I've gone now to six meetings on this, and there's a limited amount of time for people to actually discuss this. And every time I've gone to town meeting and people have tried to discuss it, they're told you were not supposed to discuss it at town meeting. You were supposed to discuss it at the planning board, at the board of selectmen. At, so the reason why I'm at every meeting is mm. because I'm trying to figure out when you get to hear every single person's ideas and when you take those into account, because what's going to happen at the town meeting is I've been to enough of them. After 10 people talk, you're going to shut it down and people are going to feel like they're not heard. And that's the, you know, when I talk to people after these meetings, they just go, these guys have already made up their mind. There's no point in us attending these meetings. There's no point in us talking. And so my question to you guys is, I mean, I'm happy to just shut my mouth and listen to you guys talk tonight and not say another word. But if I go to that town meeting and I get shut down and you tell me that this is not the forum to talk about it, I'm gonna be really frustrated because I've been trying over and over again to be heard on this. And I listen to the people on the Zoom calls trying to be heard and at a certain point, Everyone's sick of hearing people go against what they perceive you've already decided. So uh, that's why I keep coming to all the meetings because I'm like, at some point, I'm going to understand when you get to talk and be heard. So, I mean, I feel like I'm heard when I talk at these meetings, but I just feel like you guys have a time limit in your mind. Like, okay, we got it. We don't want to hear it anymore. But also, if you're if you're listening to the words, the verbiage people are using, they're using words like you're attacking short-term rentals, you're, you're, you know, you're penalizing them. There is no, there's not one single person that's spoken at any of these six meetings besides you guys and Noel that are positive about this. No one, no one has stood up and said, this is a great idea. I think you're really solving the problem. I just, I don't understand why no one's hearing it and saying, yeah, you know what? Wendy and Rick are right. This is not, this should not be going to the town meeting because the perception is this is an attack on homeowners. So anyway, I, I know that I will have 15 letters to read at the town meeting, and I hope that you will let me read them. Because you're not going to let me read them here, so. Well, my suggestion to everyone all the time is go to as many meetings as you can, Agreed. because that's the only place you're going to get this information. Some of it's online. Zoom, obviously, is not ideal for anything. You know, if you've got 100 people on Zoom, there are a lot of people out there that just aren't going to be heard because that's the technology. Okay, it's not because we're trying to shut them down. Um, as far as town meeting goes, 
there does get to be a point where we have to worry about how long that meeting is because we'll have to convene it again some other place and continue because we will lose our quorum. And that's, that is one of the things we really do have to worry about. Yeah, I just like the public hearing. I was like, okay, it's a public hearing. People should just be able to talk on this forever. It's the point is mm -hmm. a public hearing. And even that got shut down. And I was just like, okay, so where is the place that we get to talk about this? Or just, can everyone just write you a letter and you'll just sit and read the letters and say, we've got 35 letters that don't agree with this and we have one memo that mm -hmm. agrees with it, you know? So that people can understand a consensus and understand like how people are feeling about this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, I know I seem like a squeaky wheel. No, I no, just feel no, very no, strong. Absolutely. No, don't worry about it. It's good, good stuff. No right. experience at town meeting when the question gets moved is because there's one or two people repeating themselves over and, yeah. over and over. And after a while, you have to draw the line somewhere. But I've not seen it abused in 21 years. It's not a perfect system. You want to make a motion? All right. Um, I'm going to go to the next item. Are we? So we, we need to make a motion, a motion to. I'll move um, that we set the fee for the um, short term rental registration at $250 a year. Second. So, go ahead, Kim. <clears throat> Hi, this is Kim. Um, it's my understanding that tonight was to set a fee, but also to determine who's going to enforce this ordinance. I think we need to. I think we out. need Sherwin to give us some guidance on that. Well, <laughs> well, basically, we haven't budgeted anything for it. And we don't know how we're going to pay for it. So we once we'll start to figure out these things as we go along, uh, but we don't have the answers tonight. I don't have the answers yet. Uh, how would you work? I just don't see how we can move something and recommend something if we don't even know if we've got a person in the town office that's gonna have an extra three hours a week or six hours or however many hours. I feel like we're doing a disservice to our the people that work in our town office, along with, I mean, that would be like someone coming to me and saying, okay, the school's decided to do X and you're going to do it. Sorry, I don't have time to do that. Are we going to lose people in our town office because we're expecting them to pick up on something that we haven't even finished discussing and find out if this is really going to fix the problem yet? I don't think it's even fair to them. I, I get like, we got to start somewhere, but, and we've started. I mean, obviously Noel's put in, you know, and there's a lot of great information here, but until we even know if we're going to have someone that can open these applications and do anything with them, well, if we approve it at town meeting, wouldn't it start July 1? Well, it actually starts May 3rd. <laughs> oh. It would start May 3rd? Yeah, sure, because it would be effective as of the day the passage of the town meeting. So, how would you? Right. Well, we, okay. well, 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 what we'll have to do is between now and May is come up with some sort of a plan, assuming it passes uh, to do that. So, we've got another couple of months to try to figure that out. But we do have to start, we can't be fair all of a sudden. We'll figure out how we fund it. Uh, who does it? Uh, how many hours? We have to figure that stuff out as we go along. So we would be ready. Not, to, uh, not to mention, you know, I expect Kim's as busy as everybody else that works for this town. And if if she's required to start making more visits and more, you know, if VRBO and Airbnb already does all this stuff, but now we're requiring someone in the town to there, there's no there's no requirement in the ordinance for an inspection unless there's something reported so if there's a problem then it, just in any in the case of any kind of violation yes Kim, go ahead Kim. 
Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. she may have forgotten her hands up. <clears throat> Kim, is your hand supposed to be up? Okay. Anybody else? Oh, can, I down. can I just clarify a few things yes. about the ordinance um, again? We, I was asked to write a short term rental ordinance. So <laughs> let's just clarify that. Um, there's a lot of other things that we could say about the things that have come out of these discussions, but I think we're here just to talk about the specifics of this ordinance. I would, I'm very much looking forward to talking about affordability, year round housing availability. Um, seasonal resource <clears throat> housing availability and all the tools that the town can, can do. This is one way, this ordinance was drafted as one way to address the one specific thing that the land use ordinance committee was asked to do. So just to, that couldn't have to say something about that. But I would also like to add that the ordinance is written in a way that isn't specific to the code enforcement officer, except for when the code enforcement officer may do an inspection. But it is written so that the town should needs to decide how it's going to be administered. Um, as I said at the beginning, we're working on a, an application form, which could be very simple or it could be very complicated. It's really our team guys. But if we're really trying to go with what we've what we've been doing from the start to finish of this process is that I think we're working toward keeping it as simple as possible. I agree. I agree. This is the situation that we're in. So we're just trying to like manage expectations on where we are with this whole process. Um, and I, I've taken a copious notes on everything that people are saying, and they're all really good comments. Um, and it's it's a really complicated issue. I mean, I do think sometimes short-term rentals get the um, the blame for things that is aren't necessarily there. It's not the cause of the affordability issue. We can demonstrate that. Katrina's been able to share uh, data with us for over a year now, and there hasn't been one house on the market in the whole time of my dessert for over a year that anybody that makes the median income can afford. So obviously there's some fundamental things that we need to work on. But with regard to this, this ordinance, I think what we've really tried to do, and we've had comments from people who own short-term rentals, who manage short-term rentals, is keep it as simple as we can. So, um, but I don't, I'm not sure I answered the question of uh, who's going to do that. I think that's something that we need to work on if we're not prepared to do it. Happy to sit down and work with everyone on coming up with a process. But I think the goal from my perspective was to try to keep it as easy to administer as possible, knowing that everybody in the town has overwork. And we actually tried to take as much of that burden off from the code board, in particular. Because this isn't necessarily a code thing, it's an application form it needs to be processed somehow through the town at this point. And there are complaints, and I guess, and Kim's a much better person to answer this than me, but if there already are complaints for short term rentals, who has to address those? So it's, there's it's not really any different from that at this point. Tony, one. Uh, I, I tend to disagree. You can't look at this ordinance in a vacuum. Okay. It, the, the context discussions of this ordinance have brought up discussions about effects on affordable workforce housing, um, different things like that. A lot of the topics that Jay up there talked brought up, um, 123 Main Street brought up. Um, it, it's not just, you're not just looking through a tunnel at this particular ordinance. There's ramifications resulting from an ordinance that to me, it looks like it has a lot of needs some more research in it. And that's why I brought up the idea of a study group. And I'm not a big gun ho fan of studying something right to death just for the sake of studying it. But like John or Martha said, this will be, be this, we'll see this tenfold, twentyfold, May 2nd or 3rd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, I think we probably will also hear from from people who weren't brought out because of personal connection. Uh, I think we'll hear from more people that we we also represent that that maybe don't own the property. So I, I don't know, and I'm not making the defense that they shouldn't show up. They should show up. We have a problem with people showing up, and we appreciate you being here. But the, we need to hear from more people that aren't directly invested taxpayers. I think we need to give them a chance to weigh in. But I think if you were attacking the people who weren't directly invested, 
you'd hear them show right exactly we feel attacked that's why we're here right exactly right that's why so, it's 15 letters that's so to right. them it's esoteric it's not a real problem because they're just like oh i don't like that you do this right but it doesn't affect me at all but to me i'm like well hold on well for actually it doesn't affect me at all because i have a cabin on my property and i live in it and i rent my farmhouse because i work all the time but it doesn't matter i'm, I'm not i'm not here because of that i'm exempt but it doesn't matter that I'm exempt. What matters is I don't, I just don't think this is the right thing to be doing. That's fair. Okay, we have a motion and a second for $250 fee. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? All opposed? And Rick not present. <clears throat> we'll see how it goes. See how it goes. Nothing is permanent. Well, you know I'm going to fight you. <laughs> you that's, know we're going to be there. That, that's good. All right. Thank you, Noel. Thanks, Thanks Noel. Noel. Yeah. Stanley, Lane, Stanley Lane Street Light update. I don't think it really is an update. No. We had one very last close. week. Oh, there is one last week. Well, very, just that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think good. that they seem to be happy. Everybody's here. okay right yeah. now. So we're good. <laughs> There's an email that was passed okay. on to us that Did you just... get a copy of it. I don't need it. Okay. I just need it. Yeah. There's a we're talking at once. FYI about oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The yes. Burrs and the Stanleys, and theoretically everybody's happy right now. Yep. Everybody's happy with yeah. turning yeah. light off. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Update on MRC solid waste processing facility in Hamden by MRC member Tony Smith. As the saying goes, it's been a long, strange trip. Um, I'm pleased to say that the results of our last solicitation for interested parties, the developer did one, you know, we're presently talking about. We can't tell you who they are yet. I hope to within a week. And it's, it's what I've learned in this process. It's, it's very competitive. Nobody wants anybody else to know who's doing what. So I'm sorry. How many did you? How many? Did you three, say? I believe. Three. Yes. Um. I think you. Everything we need to know is right, it's right there. That's right. Plus, but the, we got the whole thing. We got the whole yes. thing here. Well, we got, that was the whole presentation. I we really have to duck behind that. We got the Tracy. presentation and the instructions on every slide. And <laughs> the I think you're going to have to do a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> um, I, that's one of the reasons I was getting ready to duck because I wasn't planning on oh. PowerPoint presentation. That's why I, I broke that out. Um, yeah. We have very dedicated people on that board. Karen Casal is the treasurer of the city of Earth. She's the kind of sours. She had a contrary to popular belief. One meeting we went to this was a long time ago. We all told them we were earning two hundred thousand dollars a year to be on the MRC. And that's not the case. And I used to be able to go, well, I can go to the MRC meetings on my employer's dime. Well, that's not happening anymore. The volunteer board. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's like the ADD and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. Um, we have, and it's been thrown up in our face that we don't have very knowledgeable people on there. One man's a retired international national banker. Mm -hmm. One is a retired banker that's a town manager. Another one's a town manager. We have a treasurer for one of the largest cities in the area. Uh, we have a retiree that works a little on the side for the MRC. That's me. We have... Uh, another town manager from Oakland, um, a fellow that runs a three town solid waste uh, transfer station. So he is a town manager in Orono. There are good people on there. And they take the public money real seriously, very seriously. If I've not heard Sophie, town manager from Orono, say once or a hundred times, it's the public money. And it's always stressed this is not the director's money. The MRC board of directors manages 150 members' money. And it's getting low. Yeah. 
So, Tony, what was your, did you go to the presentation at the State House? No, I didn't. But my understanding, uh, Mike Carroll, the executive director, went, Aaron Cassell, the president, Aaron Hattari, he's, he's the public works director of Bangor. He's now vice president. I moved out of that position. Aaron moved in. Um, no, but I understand it was very well received. May I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I understand all what, what they're running out of time and they're running out of money. You've got somebody in the works that may fix that, and you can't tell us who it is. Now, if that comes through, mm -hmm. does this idea that was floated to the state to collateralize a $20 million loan go away? Or where does, I mean, what is the, is, was this just because you're getting so close in time that you needed to have this on uh, request in, in, in case this one potential buyer falls through? This, that's been talked about um, private ownership and operation of that plant. It's been talked about since we fell on hard times. Right. Since the fire right went out of business. And it's, it's been known right along. But yes, Jeff. Yeah. So in, in the event we didn't come up with a private partner, which Fiber Right was the sole owner of that facility. We were not like her back then. I know. We now own the facility, $80 million worth for a million and a half dollars. But yes. So in, the, the one purchaser that you have in, in the works possible, yeah. possible would be another private owner that would take the take the take it off the hands of RMRC as far as owners are concerned and would we would own a percentage. Okay. And yes. and if that falls through. You're hoping to yes. borrow the money to buy it out, buy or put, to get enough money to get it started, yes. and then run it yourselves, and yes. long enough to last at least the 24, 36 months that it's going to take to become profitable or whatever was in the yes. report. Yes, and we're not asking for the state's money; it's just a guarantee. Yeah, I understand. So, do you have a time frame of when they expect to respond? Whether or not they would be willing to do that. The state, no time frame there, but we are in touch with them almost every day. And they're aware of how short time yes, they are. PERC has been landfilling. We've been bypassing the mm -hmm. handed facility to PERC, and they in turn are going to JRL. And we're saving money in one way with this bypass to a landfill. Our backup plan was Northwalk landfill. And I probably mentioned this to you yeah. two or three years ago. Our garbage met the South's garbage coming up because they were going to JRL. We're going to North Rock, and, and the director at the time, the wind, why don't you keep this up here and you keep down there? And we got permission, authorization from the landfill people that we had a contract with at North Rock to do that. So, one last question. Assuming yeah. that, well, one of these situations comes through, either the buyer comes through or the state collateralizes a loan so that you can get this thing fired up. When are we when are we looking at for when it actually starts doing what it was built to do again? And that's not profitability yet. No, just yeah, get it yeah. started. It won't be I profitable guess, until it's been on a good long while. We had money in hand, I'd say 10 to 12 months. Yeah. Oh. And I'm packing on so because that those are changing costs oh, okay. that have not been moving. But we've been paying to heat it. Uh I know uh, that's one of the banker gas, paying the insurance. Uh, we can't let that thing freeze up. Nope. I have no, I have a different kind of sure. question. Um, so I, if I understand this right, the um, pulp you have a you have a um, license now to sell the pulp. Yes, it, it's right there. What we need to do, we we agree on language with the DEP and either the MRC or the my or the majority owner will actually do the input of that information into the license and send it back to the How about the biogas? Is that also yeah. that's licensed? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's that's a greater percentage goes to the biogas. Is that correct? Well the pulp is going to be the pulp different. takes 30 percent. Right. It's 30 percent of the output. Right. Yes. And maybe you can remember some that were involved the old Loring Air Force Base jet fuel line from Sears Court to Loring goes right through that site. That's one of the reasons the site is attractive. I see. We can't just, it's going to take a quarter million dollars to upgrade that so you can inject a pump house in it. But the in, in, inability to sell the pulp was the biggest there was challenge big, to big profitability in the past. So that's resolved now, or as good as resolved. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What about the, uh, the plastic bricks that I guess so were, broke they were fuel bricks? 
Oh, yes, and we had a buyer, Dragon Center, yeah. back in the day, was interested in buying them the fire mm -hmm. So um, there's a company, there are a bunch of municipalities, I guess mostly naturally on the West Coast, um, that are actually using uh, blended bricks for construction. Do you know um, anything about um, that? Like two by four? No, it just oh, like bricks. standard blocks. Yeah. blocks yeah. I and think once it. the recycling market has been out tanked in 2017, mm -hmm. China had the national sword or whatever it was called. And they were like 99% of the recyclables they were taking went away. They, and the ones they were buying, the states and, and Europe, they allowed it. 0.5% contamination. Everything went to the Southeast. Some of those might have been Chinese owned companies that operated in the Southeast and it, it, they were contaminated. Environmental and health reasons that they were bad. But apparently the recycling markets are coming around. And I think there's plastic two by fours now mm -hmm. for building material. I, I think uh, necessity is the mother of invention. I, I think. Will be entrepreneurs that will develop some. Well, here in the University of Maine has quite a quite a developed materials science. Dr. Degar, yeah. Dr. Degar, yeah. that was his first TA when he came from London. <laughs> just in case you ever asked. Was a fritter. Did you read about that? Oh, Last yeah. Last name was a fritter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. Here, here. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tony. Nice to see you all again. Nice sign up front. I like that. It does look nice. Really nice. The other one. I didn't mean to apply that it didn't look nice. But it didn't look like the old kind of sign. I thought it was an advertisement for some sort of elementary school activity. That's all. All right. New business. Mm -hmm. Item A, consider the consideration of stone, maths, and steamboat work utility location permit. Yes. Yeah, I can give a little intro. Uh, Greg Johnson, the engineer for um, Jesse Stone and Michael and Ann Matheson. Mm -hmm. um, they had approached us uh, a number of years ago to look at power lines where I've seen a work with the houses. It's, it's about high height when you're up there. Um, we had several rounds with the communication provider, the same uh, folks, and at the same time, um, as we started to see the light in the tunnel, how it kind of unfold, um, the water main project independently went forward with a number of others. Um, seamlessly, we've gotten her song to agree on how we're approaching it, and the um, plan is to remove, um, we have to add a new drop hole to get underground. So one new hole goes in. Um, and then three get removed along the way um, to remove it in front of their two properties, which is about 400 feet, um, and then it comes back up to serve um, the yacht club. Um, and by, you know, I guess to say perseverance and things aligning as that road is getting now, the water main is connected, um, and the road is getting cut and you repaved. Um, they'd like to come in, put these lines underground, um, and as a result of that, um, you know, Meet the timing, um, the road would be fully paved back now because the water main project, all it did was buys in half of that project. These people need to come in and say, Oh, the road's already ripped up. Can we get in there and say, No, they buy the other half of it? And so, in the end result of it, it would be a full width pavement, um, you know, um, big sort of um, project. So, you, do you think this is, uh, is, is, seems like a rather limited scope project? I mean, you've got one property that. Wants no wires in its view. Two, two or, okay, two properties yeah. owned by the same individual. Or no, I guess two no, separate. two separate. Yeah. Is is does it make sense to do that, or would it make more sense to just put the entire line under? Uh, so, uh, because of the facilities and um, the pump station at one end and other things that are in between, there's actually pretty limited amounts to do that all the way along that road. Um, mainly, um, and that's a, a good question. In this particular location, um, there's let's say let's say there's no real services, so there's no need for a big boxy transform on a big steel pole of sorts in the mid mid sections. There's no reserve for people again. Yeah, so every place else you can go, you would have to find a way to have an interim transformer on the ball. 
And um, by the way, that road is shaped, the cliff on one side, on the top, road put down there, there's really no opportunity to have transformers served into each service. And so um, would it be easy to do that? You could if you could find the space, but yeah. in this instance, there's no people between. So it, it is, I would say, easier to accomplish than the other. Okay. Oh, so they're, they're paying for it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was just yeah. curious. You know, it's <laughs> okay. And they, yeah. <laughs> As I in a okay, you, do you need a, um, a motion and a to consider to consider? Yeah, I would move that we consider the utility location permit as presented. Second. All in favor. Are we considering it or well, are we approving it? Says consideration. And I know. Yeah, but well, we're, it's really a, consideration. It's, it's should, an approval. Should we move approval of the consideration? Approval of the permit. Second, and all in favor. Right. Sorry. Is that two different motions? Or no, no, it's it's motion. Motion. Yeah. You've heard us wrong the first time. That verbatim was. Thank you, Martha. I couldn't quite figure out the word. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I might just add real quickly, not only working with Ursan and communications with public works, um, Tony and his predecessor here, that um, working with how we're going to do the pavement and all that has uh, unfolded over the last couple of years. And so, with all this thing, we're going to not going to happen. I think everybody pulled apart. I want to make sure that both got spread for how we got here. So. And the only reason I'm going to say this is because the month I worked with Brian, and you guys would be as scared of this, is we think of a lot of life. <laughs> that does scare the women. I want to reconsider long time with some things. <laughs> well, you know, if we keep getting these these long articles, but you won't ask me, <laughs> and you're long gone and he's still here, I'm going to worry. That's my. <laughs> okay, so the next item is discussion and consideration. Oh. Of an underground installation for the oh, new electrical service plan of the town office building as an alternative to That's an aerial good, installation. Yeah, there. <laughs> and if approved, authorize the fire chief to sign and execute the exchange order using project contingency funds to pay for said change order. The new electrical service line installation is part of the North East Harbor Fire Station expansion project. You got the money to do it, right? Well, some I know, but I mean, there's, there's 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 money in the in the project. They're in the contingency yeah. pot. Yeah. 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 And, um, I don't know if you guys recall, but bringing three phase power into the building was part of the project mm -hmm. um, to keep the overall project cost down. It was expensive to come in aerial, and so they had some concern seeing water cables coming across. Thank the you, Greg. Thanks. Yeah. Well, personally, I think any opportunity to put lines underground is a good choice. It doesn't, for years. Yeah. I <laughs> agree. Yeah. Okay. So I would. At what is, I mean, I agree also in principle. What is the 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 uh, the content? What was the, per, the contingency altogether? Do you know what percentage of the your contingency is this going to take up? Is the up? contingency was fifteen percent of the overall project cost. Okay, six hundred thirteen thousand. Okay, yeah. and I think we're up for, including this. You approve this. I think we're up around two hundred and fifty thousand okay. spent already. Okay, it's, it's looking good though. Yeah, it looks starting really to look like a. It's coming. To, yeah. yeah, yeah. You got your office. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. so, yeah, what is the, the additional cost of this? Twenty-three thousand eight hundred and seventy-two dollars. Okay, another twenty-two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll move approval. Second. All in favor. Okay. Consideration to release up to $22,000 from the Fire Equipment Reserve Account 4040300-24471 and authorize the Fire Chief to use such funds for the purpose of purchasing structural firefighting gear. I would move approval. That's pretty okay. straightforward. All in favor. Thank you. Not need to use, I just remembered my dog, so. Mm -hmm. Barking. Oh. Barking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, Thanks Tony. Good to see you. Consider amending sections 5.2.4 and 
of the non-union personnel policy is shown in red line version following memo from Jake Wright, finance director. They look like sensible yeah. changes. Perfectly sensible. I agree. <laughs> and this isn't for any specific change that's happening it's just to kind of clear up some yeah it's mostly just cleaning up language like i mean for example on the you know essentially it's saying if we give you additional responsibilities you should be compensated for that upon taking them over and it, that was already basically what was happening because you can see that the language that was taken out it's saying at a minimum rate for the position or their present rate whichever is higher or a mutually agreed right. rate and yeah. mutually agreed rate is always the rate that you're going to because you're taking on more responsibility, so why don't you pay less? And okay. it's also by definition mutually agreed. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, it, but what what this does do is is prevent people from being treated differently. Mm -hmm. Just makes that a little bit. Okay. Well, I'll move them. Second them. All in favor? Thank you, Jake. Uh, item E, review and sign ordinance certifications for May 1 and 2, 2023 annual town meeting. So basically what you have is every year, every town meeting, you have to certify the language of the ordinances. So I have put forth what's basically in the warrant. Um, and so all you're going to be doing is signing the certifications and then I have them available for the public. Anyone wants to come and see? Okay. They can come and see. So we signing. What's it? How do you want us to do this? I have all. Oh, you have your mm -hmm. sign. Okay. Yeah. Does that include the solid waste ordinance that yes, that still includes fiberite? You know, um, is a licensed facility located? Is that still called fiberite, or is that the company that owned it prior? Uh, no, you're like, talking to the wrong person. No. That's all. You see it at the top of the third yeah, page, no, three or forty-seven. Cool. That Nobody submitted any changes to that ordinance. All I'm doing on that one, I believe, is getting rid of the sunset box. Yeah. I don't know if it's crucial, but it seems like it's not accurate. It is. Okay. You say it's just in depth. The sunset division. Eventually, in fact, when something changes hands and things, and that yes. but we get the update. I guess it is just a definition. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. And review and sign warrant for May 1 and 2 annual town meeting. Okay, you've got all that stuff. All right. Any other business? No. Okay, treasurer's warrants. Town invoices AP 2360 in the amount of $784,423.03. Move approval. Second. All in favor. State fees and payroll benefits AP 2358, AP 2359, and town payroll PR 2322 in the, for a total of $196,250.69. Move signature. Second. All in favor. This one I will abstain. <laughs> Abstention. Uh, school invoice, uh, school payroll PR 19, and voided disbursements, none. For a total of $93,500.47. Move acknowledgement. Second. All in favor? Great. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor?